Brad from TRT for Warriors. So today we are going to be going through the harmonized reference ranges for circulating testosterone levels in men of four cohort studies in the United States and Europe. So I've read this paper multiple times. If you've ever learned about testosterone levels or had a doctor um, tell you various information um, where they say your values are normal or that um, you don't meet this particular range, this is where the range is coming from. So the reference ranges for testosterone are essential for making a diagnosis of hypogonadism in men. To establish harmonized reference ranges for total testosterone in men that can be applied across laboratories by cross-calibrating assays to a reference method and standard. So they took 9,000 community dwelling men in a cohort studies in the United States and Europe, Farmingham Heart Study, European Male Aging Study, OP Fractures in Men Study, Male Sibling Study of Osteoporosis. Testosterone concentrations in 100 participants were measured using a method from the CDC normalizing equations generated based on some sort of regression I don't know what that means um, were used to generate the values okay the results the harmonization procedure resulted in inner cohort variation between testosterone measurements of men and similar ages in healthy non obese men from 19 to 39 and they were done in these percentage values and they were 264, 303, 531, 852, and 916. What in hell? <laughs> that is like definitely sick. Harmonized normal range in a healthy non obese population is 264 to 916. A substantial proportion of the inner cohort variation in the testosterone levels is due to assay differences. These data demonstrate the feasibility of generating harmonized reference ranges for testosterone that can be applied to assays which have been calibrated to the reference method. Okay, so I took it upon myself today to email uh, Dr. Travison. I broke the story today. It is March the 18th, and let's go into what I, you know, requested him. So I'd like to get a comment from you on your paper. The labs and doctors are using your paper and research and applying these levels to traumatic brain injury patients and hypogonadism patients in general. And patients, um, should these levels be applied to individuals? Why or why not? This is directly from Dr. Travison. Okay, so you're. LabCorp, your Quest, um, any of the labs in the UK, all these labs are using this and your own doctor is using this as guidelines from the American Medical Association and from the other um, bodies that have guidelines over the work that they do. Thank you for your interest. I'm always happy to respond and discuss our work and particularly to patients and patient educators like yourself. That said, I'm not a clinician. Never mind an expert in TBI, so my thoughts should be understood in that light. For all of our epidemiological-based work, we expect providers would interpret what we have published as part of a picture that may be broadly applicable to a population, but may or may not have relevance to a particular patient or clinical circumstance. Right then, okay, I'm a high school dropout, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, no, you can't apply this to individuals. So this just confirms right now. Broadly applicable to a population, but may or may not have relevance to a particular patient or clinical circumstance. I just debunked the entire system of what we're using. I'm not sure which uh, paper you're referring to. The colleagues have written more on this broadly. They've had multiple different uh, documents with the same names of uh, harmonized reference ranges. I'm personally careful to try not to say, for instance, phrases like normal range because personally feel that the word normal carries a powerful vernacular connotation that goes well beyond what we are saying scientifically. In other words, while values outside a given range may be statistically atypical, I feel it would be unhelpful to describe them as abnormal. Others may disagree. It's just my personal preference to somewhat 
to be somewhat conservative at this point. We are using the terminology of reference range that you mentioned to signify that these values are presented for reference or as a reference to a background population. You can't apply this to Samoans or Tongans or even African Americans in America. You can only apply somewhat the generic population to the European population which they tested which were sick in the first place. It is obviously true that physicians can and do use these values as one piece of information in a clinical setting, and we acknowledge in our writing that it can serve that function. But I understand and expect that physicians think of them as just one piece of context in any given setting. My colleagues who are physician scientists and experts in their particular specialities could speak on this in greater length, but I'm always happy to give my opinion as a methodologist, and I appreciate your interest. Dr. Thomas G. Travis. Wow. I can't believe that I'm the only person who's ever asked this question. It, this just blows my mind. I don't understand how no one has even questioned this before. It, it's impossible. And, and LabCorp and Quest and these clinics are setting themselves up for a class action lawsuit. Okay, so you're applying these epidemiological studies to individuals who gave you that authority no one gave you that authority <laughs> like no that's not how this works at all um, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet here um, I appreciate everyone who is tuning in and um, tell your doctor tell uh, tell everyone that you know because you have been swindled and um, this is very interesting and very dangerous all at the same time. <laughs>